It's not about hate. It's about love. Listen, if I hated people, I'd be home right now. I wouldn't be standing here. I wouldn't be taking the abuse I take every day. I wouldn't be dealing with death threats every day. If I hated people, I'd just stay home and say, you know what? I'm saved. I'm going to heaven to heck with everybody else. But I'm here today. I do what I do every day. I literally put my life on the line every day because I love people enough to tell them the truth. Now, if people don't want to accept this book for truth, that's fine. Fine. You don't have to believe it. Go believe in Mickey Mouse and the, the, you know, the dust fairy. I don't care. Everybody's got to choose for themselves what they believe. But I'm here today for one reason. If this book is true, if this book is true, then you either know Jesus as your Savior and you come to him in, in, in the humbleness and the pardon of your sins and you get saved, or you don't. That's all. And if you don't, you're going to die and go to hell. And that is why I'm standing here today. That's what the 9-11 Christian Center is about. It's about preaching the simple truth of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And again, let me just say this. Our culture is so spiritually bankrupt today. Forty years ago, nobody would have thought I was controversial. A Christian center at Ground Zero was controversial. Nobody would have really cared that much because the fact is, 40 years ago, most people at least understood biblical truth and accepted it for what it was. Whether they believed it or not, that's another story, but it wasn't culturally unacceptable. We now live in a day and age that if you sit on TV as I do every night and tell people that homosexuality is a sexual perversion, it's a sin, you're called a hater. If you tell people that Mormonism is a cult, you're called a hater. If you say that Islam is a 1,400-year-old lie from hell, which it is, you're called a hater. No, that's what this book teaches. It doesn't say kill anybody. Let me tell you something. We've had so many Muslims convert to Christianity through our ministry because we simply told them the truth and said, listen, believe what you want to believe. But this is the truth. You don't have to accept it. You don't have to believe it. But I'm telling you, this is what the book God wrote. And, and really, the final test as I close is this. You have got to understand just in your common sense that again, you can't just believe what you want and everybody believe what they want and everybody's right. That just doesn't make sense in a common sense point of view. There, there is truth. I believe truth is found in this book. And again, if this book is true, then when you die, and that's something I don't think anybody's going to try to debate, when you die, you will stand before God. And at that moment, you either know Christ as your Savior, and you will be welcomed into the glories of heaven, or you don't, and you will burn in hell. Heaven is a very real place. Hell is a very real place. I have given my life the last 20 years, and will till the day I die, trying to lead people to heaven. And my friend, that has nothing to do with hate. That has everything to do with love. Will you bow your heads? Let's pray. Father. I thank you right now for this opportunity to be here today for the opening of this 9-11 Christian Center. Lord, I just pray right now that you will look down from heaven and bless these efforts. So many people have come together with a vision to bring Christ to ground zero. And you know, God bless the, the, the Muslims for deciding to put a mosque here as, as, as distasteful as I personally may believe it is. God bless him because you know what? It at least spurned one man to bring the gospel to ground zero. And people will hear that gospel and people will get saved and people will find everlasting life through faith in your son, Jesus Christ. So Lord, I pray right now, I pray for this great city. I pray, God, that a revival will be sparked in the city through this Christian center in these coming weeks and months and years. I pray for every pastor and evangelist who's going to be working with us. I pray for Danny and the, and the local team here that's making all this possible. And Lord, I come today humbly just thanking you for the opportunity to be able to serve you in, in, this, in this way. I really do. I'm humble. I recognize every morning when I wake up, I'm the least of the least. I have so much to be thankful for. And all I can do to say thank you in gratitude for saving my soul is try to at least lead someone else to that same saving knowledge. 
And Lord, right now, as, as, as we're bowed in this room, I know we have a lot of press here on this opening day, but that's okay. I just want, as every head is bowed and every eye is closed, I just want to ask each person to take a second and just ask yourself this question. What happens if your heart stops beating in the next minute? What happens? What happens? According to your book, we are going to stand before you the instant we take that last breath. And at that moment, the only thing that's going to matter is whether we know Jesus is our Savior. And as we're bowed this morning in this place, as we're bowed before you, I just want each person to just ask yourself, are you ready? Are you ready? If your heart stops beating in the next minute, you're not, or you're not sure, I want to give you that opportunity right now. I want to make that opportunity available for you right now. Because you see, you can't write a check to get saved. You can't do enough good works to get saved. Because the Bible says we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And it's our sin that separates us from a holy and righteous God. No, there's only one way to get saved. It's not because your parents were saved. It's not because you sat in a church for so many years. The only way to get saved is to make that free will conscious choice to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if you're bowed right now, and you're sitting there, and if you aren't 100% certain that if you took your last breath in the next minute, that you would be forever with Jesus, I want you to pray with me right now. Right now right where you're at. Just pray these words. Dear Lord, I come to you this day a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sin. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and is my Savior. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Take my life now and forevermore. My life belongs to you. From this day forward, I am yours.